If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this extra fun episode of Mind Pump, for the first 43 minutes. Adam, Whoa, 43 minutes. <laughs> we went off. Adam, Justin, and myself Told get into stories. a prolonged uh, introduction. Mm. We talk about the show Dark on Netflix. We talk about J.J. Abrams' it's dark. inability to close and the new Star Wars. No spoilers. We don't no, actually no. give we anything We wouldn't do away. that to you guys. Don't worry. We talk about the documentary What's With Wheat on Netflix. <clears throat> I highly suggest... Uh, you guys all watch it, and I highly suggest my co-host fucking watch it, because I've been telling him now for the past <laughs> three days. Sal's been hammering us about that. We talk about the chronic disease explosion. Uh, a lot of people aren't talking about autoimmune issues, and just chronic diseases in general seem to be exploding in modern societies. What the hell's going on? And then I mentioned taking Four Sigmatic Chaga for colds. Now, Four Sigmatic Chaga tastes... Strong. <laughs> That's a unique flavor. Because it is strong. Right. And uh, Adam highlighted its uniqueness. Yeah, Adam, Adam's trying to lose us our sponsors, yeah. Yeah, apparently. Adam, hey, listen, I'm just going to keep it real with the audience. Uh, I don't. What I don't want to do is I don't want us all to pump the fucking tires of this thing, and then someone gets it thinking it's going to taste awesome. No, it works awesome. Yeah, it works, it works great, awesome. but it just, no, it doesn't Classic taste. case of keeping it real. It's, right. it's freaking legit we would, we mushrooms. Be, we wouldn't be mind pump, but yeah. you know what? You, that's just how we roll, bro. And now you go keep to foursigmatic.com forward slash mind pump enter the code mind pump at checkout for a discount we also do some unboxing uh doug had ordered us some stuff from thrive market in fact uh we were super rude you might be hearing us munching on stuff yeah. throughout this episode I was eating a lot of peanuts check this out if you go to <laughs> a lot of what peanuts there you go yeah. if you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump here's what you'll get one month free membership twenty dollars off your first three orders of forty nine dollars or more and free shipping then we finally get into the questions the first question was is it wise to feed a cold and starve a fever? Good question for right now, man. Everyone getting sick around this yeah. time. Yeah, it's is, going around. Is it uh, is it an old wives' tale or is it true? Next question was: How do you implement Maps Performance with CrossFit training? So let's say you love CrossFit, but you also love Maps Performance. Yeah. How would you meld the two? Should you meld? Do the it two? instead. And which one's better? Yeah. The next question was: What fitness categories do we think are going to break through? In the future, we do some more predicting in this episode. So far, we've been 100% accurate on every prediction we've made. <laughs> Just like Nostradamus. That's right. The last question is, uh, lots of pro bodybuilders advise doing low volume, high intensity training. Uh, <laughs> is that the key? Is the key to reduce your volume and go super high intensity? Or should you go you know, higher volume, moderate intensity? Like, What's the deal? I trust pro bodybuilders for everything the answer to all of that is yes yeah uh finally um three days till christmas three bro days till christmas you guys got all your christmas shopping then uh mm, i did most of it i did so amazon shout out so check this out uh after christmas the next holidays new year's and we know what happens in new year's here they come everybody starts their resolution everybody wants to get in shape everybody, everybody goes wants to get balls fit. to the wall the mm. problem is people don't have a plan yeah imagine this imagine you start the new year near off new year off 2018, you've got a plan for the entire year. You know exactly what to do every week, every month, what exercises, the reps, the sets. Uh, if you have questions on the exercises, you have trainers demoing them for you. Well, that's our MAPS Super Bundle. If you enroll in our MAPS Super Bundle, you will have exercise programming for the entire year. Everything planned out. We have MAPS Anabolic in there, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. We have MAPS Prime, MAPS Anywhere. One year's worth of exercise programming, all discounted at something like 30% off. And if you enroll in the Super Bundle, you'll also get an offer for half off the normal enrollment fee for our forum. Also in January, the forum's going to have an annual fee. So if you enroll now and you get in the forum- You're in for life. You're yeah. in there for life. You're one of us. If you have any questions on any of this, the place to go is mindpumpmedia.com. Oh my goodness. You guys can't- That sucks for you. You can't talk about Star Wars still. So. Uh, we actually we, can. we actually could yeah, you know, yeah we could we could lambast you gonna yeah, have could, you're gonna have to do Star it Wars you have to do it on a solo podcast <laughs> do, get in here by yourself I just started one it's called the Han Solo podcast <laughs> starring me yeah yeah mm -hmm. no I didn't you're so you're you're at episode five on Dark right now Justin yeah and Sal you're on two just number two okay 
I need you guys to step I up. like it. I need you guys but to... But I'm f- confused as fuck. I know. I need you to finish it because I'm still confused. I think together we will be able to put it together. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll figure it out. This is sure. like one of those big puzzles. You can't, that you you can't put figure all it out. Pieces I'll figure in. it out. You can't figure it out. I already out. figured it out. No, you can't. I watched two episodes. I know exactly <laughs> yeah. what Yeah. <laughs> <Which, laughs> they didn't give they you got, They got you then. <laughs> two? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way. No. There's so much shit. 100% that goes. figured it out. Wow. Can I tell you? Go for it. I've already watched it all. I don't want to spoil it. You know, I don't want to spoil it. Justin hasn't seen the whole thing. Uh, Oh, okay. (laughs) That's okay, though. I tell you what, even (laughs) even if I tried to spoil it for you guys and put it all together, it's still... Dude, it's too complex. Yeah, there's... I'm trying to remember the last show that I remember. You know what it reminds me of a little bit is uh, Fringe. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get into Fringe? I never watched it. I love that show. Yeah, so Fringe was really good. I stopped watching it towards the last... When they split to the parallel universes. Dude, that's J.J. Abrams for you. Right, he 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 does a great job at like starting things and then like like leaving you suspended, but like Can't closing out, he fucking he's terrible. That's he's why I'm like I'm dying because he's scheduled to be like the third Star Wars again. Yeah, and I'm like no. Oh really? Yeah, he doesn't know how to close anything. Yeah, at the end when Chewbacca has sex with Princess Leia, you're was, like what? I'm like ew, yeah, beastiality much? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, you know he anyway. he doesn't close movies. What else did he do that he doesn't close movies very well? Um, he also did well. Lost. Uh, the, oh, the, yeah. the oh, series, series was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I loved it, and then the the, the way he, like finished it was, was yeah. Awful. And that's how I feel about Fringe too. Fringe, yeah. I loved it for most of it, and then it just uh, didn't Star go. Trek. Uh, oh, he did that one too. Did, yeah, both those. I, I think are they up to three now? Like the new, like revised know. version. Anyway, I, I did like what he did with the franchise, but like again, I don't think he's a closer. I think he's a he's a starter. What so I, you're you're in the camp of I thought most people that really really like Star Wars are were excited about J.J. Abrams actually doing it. They're, you're I not, loved I loved him doing the first one, uh, and and just his ideas and inclusions. But like, are they supposed to close out the last one? Know, the man. last one's supposed to be 2018. Know, those characters he created, like Finn and, and uh, Captain Phasma, I'm not stoked on. They're they're just like meh. Yeah, you know, like we're, we didn't get much. Anyway, I don't want to get into it because you know we're going to ruin everything for you. Adam. Yeah, yeah. We don't wanna, we don't well, I mean, I feel it. like you, without talking about this one, you could still talk about J.J. Abram and talk about what, why you don't or do like. I thought most big Star Wars fanatics actually were really excited because before that, who yeah. did the who did the two stupid ones, the ones that were like all animated crazy and just didn't uh, even follow Lucas. Like, so that's just Lucas by himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just he lost moron. It. He, no, he just. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. He he tried to just because you can do something, you know. Like he he didn't really have depth to that story of like bringing Darth Vader, like his story, like it was just lame. Yeah. So he tried to make uh, you know something out of nothing. Which... Now uh, the knock that I keep hearing from people too is that it's the same thing, but just mm. different. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like it's the same thing. It's like it's, a, it's well, that was the was, first one. It's like the whole. This was this actually, one was different. This was yes. This one was actually. Much it challenged less. it challenged you, and I think that's why like okay, there's, there's cool. a bit of a nerd revolt of like the purists. It's but, much less Star Warsy, but I liked it because of that fact. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. They fucking shook it up on you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's cool. It's great. You'll like it a lot. I think. Okay. Yeah, I cool. think. What I want you guys to watch is the documentary "What's with Wheat." You have to watch that documentary. I saw your post. I read your post. Damn, so I, I keep forgetting. You got to text me and remind me. I mean, it's just it's what is it, an hour and a half long. So you'll watch yeah. it, you know, real quick. But I'm assuming that's so where I you, thought that's when, where the post came from, right? I mean, well, that, well that's part what of it sent you on your. I mean, so I've known the stuff that I saw on What's with Wheat. Um, I I didn't necessarily learn anything new. I just like the way they made it because when I looked at when I saw the title and I saw people posting about it. And I saw the, the cover of the documentary, which is like a piece of bread made in a, into a skull or whatever. Mm. I thought to myself, yeah, like, oh, this it's, is going to be... It's going to be like, uh, like, like what, what the, the health. health. Very biased. Yeah, it's going to be like, what the health. They're going to go super sensationalist. It's going to be dogma. Mm-hmm. Ridiculousness. No, they were very intelligent with the way that they explain things. Mm. Now, is that because you identify with it and no. you agree with it? Or did they truly... Cause- no, they did not say that wheat... It was just a presentation evil. of facts. They did not say that wheat is evil. What they explained was like wheat has been a staple crop for humans for thousands of years. It is what fed us post agricultural revolution. It's the reason why you know mankind grew so rapidly uh, during that period of time. And so humans have been eating wheat for a very very long time. The, the the difference is, and what they were very, and that's what they were explaining. Like like wheat's not necessarily a problem. It's that, number one, the wheat that we eat today is not the same as the wheat that we ate back then. Right. We have bred it like to be- double, triple amount of gluten in it. We, yeah, we've bred it to, to, for much higher yield, to be much more hardy. 
uh, to withstand uh, disease, to withstand all these you know things that can kill wheat. Which now, now the, that's almost everything, every crop. So why is it so? What's so different? Is it because uh, so of, per, so because of gluten? Is that I mean? Uh, so particular. So certain things in foods are there to uh, as defense mechanisms for the foods against predators. Mm-hmm. So if you and I went and grabbed a stalk of wheat out of the ground and just started eating it mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. We, it would destroy us. We would have severe, we, we can't, you can't eat wheat that way. Humans can't digest it that way. So humans, because we're obviously intelligent creatures, we figured out ways to process this food. Strip it of all those. Well, well just to make it in a, in a way that we can digest it. So number one, ancient wheat, very different from modern wheat. Number two, we would stone ground it for a long fucking time, the whole thing. It wasn't just like, we wouldn't remove any parts of it. Mm-hmm. We'd stone ground the hell out of it. And then we would make it uh, through a fermentation process. And that fermentation process makes it far easier to digest. So it's like- What it's, is that? Does it, do they go into detail what that looks like? What does that process look like? So if you wanted something similar today, you would get sourdough, like good old school sourdough bread that's made from uh, what's called uh, ancient- uh, grains of or ancient forms of wheat. So I can't remember the name of the type of wheat, but you can buy it today where it's the same that they, you know, thousands of years ago. And what they'll do is they'll process it in the same way and then they'll, they'll uh, ferment it. That's what sourdough bread is. And for people who have light sensitivities to wheat, they're probably going to be okay. In fact, when you talk to functional medicine doctors uh, about- So is it the fermenting process that's, mm-hmm. that's actually- It breaks down the gluten. It breaks down- uh, so it's like ancient humans knew that this was a tough thing to to digest and they created they produced it in a way that made it easier and ancient wheat was probably consumed with raw forms of dairy or raw forms of milk mm. raw milk naturally has higher levels of bifidobacterium in them and bifidobacterium has been shown to protect uh, against the potential uh, oh, that's inflammatory inter- that's uh, really interesting. processes of Well, of wasn't it too like they would ferment and make like beer and all these different uh, um, drinks in or- because the water was a lot more like suspect? In some cases, yeah. In some, ca- in in, some areas. Yeah, in some cases, yeah. So, And that's the thing, like ancient humans, we understood the, the, the dangers of particular types of foods and we just found out ways or figured out ways to eat them. Today, wheat is... Uh, there, we we spray it with things to make it grow faster, so like 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 uh, plant hormones or chemicals to make it grow faster. We do something where we blast them with glyphosates. Uh, it's called desiccation, I believe, that gets it to dry t- so that we can process it quicker. Then with the way we make bread, we make it very quickly. We don't ferment it for the most part. Um, so it's just it's it's much more of a potential what inflammatory happens in, process. what happens in the fermenting process like do you do they break it down in the video like what is that they do look, what what is that they what? do they do break it down um you know i don't remember i believe fermented bread reduces the gluten or breaks down the gliadin and the gluten and the proteins that are found in wheat that are can be tough to digest and basically what they're saying is that modern wheat in the context of inflammation in the context of a poor diet, a poor microbiome sets the stage for a lot of problems. And when you it sets the stage for these immune reactions, um, you, the, you know, when you have a, an immune reaction to food, that's not your typical allergic reaction. It can display itself in a lot of different ways. It can, it can look like migraines. It can look like joint inflammation. In other words, if we get the immune system to react uh, inappropriately or overreact, that overreaction can display itself all over the body. So if your immune system is is uh, auto, if you have autoimmune issues, it can be your joints that it attacks. Now you have rheumatoid arthritis, or it can be your eyes and you have issues with, you know, developing blindness or night vision. It could go to causing headaches. It can go to your skin. Skin is the most common one. Skin, uh, eczema, uh, and psoriasis are the most common uh, displays of an immune system that is, you know, haywire from the gut. They also talk about how most of these autoimmune issues probably have roots in, in, in the gut. They probably have roots in the gut. So, but it's a very well made um, documentary. So I, I want you guys to watch it. So yeah, guys, we'll watch we it. Can for talk sure. yeah, about I'll, it. I'll watch it. It sounds, so it wasn't that uh, it didn't get all 
what the health like where they were just super you, you weren't parts you're like oh come on it's no a, in that's fact a, a couple of them said like some people can eat wheat and not have ever because i know i know that lane got onto joe's post when rogan posted about it and really tried to light him up over it and so i was curious to like okay because i feel like for the most part lane's got a pretty good head on his shoulders and when we had him on the show and we talked about it, i think we mm. he's he's just he hates the the uh the zealots about it right the people mm-hmm. that are just like dogmatic about their approach but it sounds like this video wasn't this He's documentary just, wasn't yeah, like trying that. to be a contrarian uh, you know? there are certain things in foods that the immune system tends to recognize more readily as a foreign invader and you know one of them is gliadin and gluten in in wheat uh another one is some of the or dairy proteins or lactose or egg whites or legumes you know, lagoons have these, uh, you know, protection mechanisms to protect them from being consumed by animals. And so it, it only makes sense that that's going to, that, that's something that your immune system may recognize. But it depends on context, too. Like if your gut is super healthy, you've got great microbiome, I mean, you can get away with a lot more. You know what I'm saying? Which seems to be every teenager, right? It seems like teenagers, for the most part, get away with it. And it's like when you start getting into your 20s. Or kids. Yeah, right. Kids. But less and less. Right, which yeah. is which is probably because we just let them go haywire with a lot of this shit, and it's, and it's getting more processed, more more glyph- glyphosate. Glyphosate. Yeah, I can't even say it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. say it glyphosates. 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 Yeah, um, it's 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 an interesting situation, and you know they talk about it on the documentary how we have traded, uh, you know, uh, uh, acute illness for chronic illness. Like we have we have solved. Uh, infectious disease. We've solved these acute problems, mm-hmm. but we've traded it with these chronic conditions that we have that, for the most part, that they didn't exist like this, right. like they do now. Like we can preserve, like our lifespan is a lot more, is greater now, but like the quality, I feel like, is is something that we need to address, like specifically. Well, look at um, like cancer. Yeah, cancer is a great example. I just read. It- an article um, yesterday, I posted it on the forum. Oh, yeah, you stirred up some shit with that, too. Yeah, that some scientists, you know, when they look at mum- mummies and remains and stuff like that, that finding cancer is extremely rare mm. when they look at these things. Now, some people will argue well, and say, well, that people, being said, yeah, it was still can, found, though, right? Well, some people would, some people argue and say, well, it's because people didn't live as long. Well, but can, can you also argue that like how many mummies do, do they really like biopsy? Have like, how the, many mummies are there? Like, what's your your your, your well, uh, amount of uh, uh, test subjects? So, cancer tumors should be pretty easy to spot in a mummified uh, remain or in um, you know if we're finding like uh, you know old prehistoric remains or whatever of of humans, we should be able to see them because. They didn't have treatments, so if they died of the tumors, if they died from the cancer, it would be in the bone. It would be in the. It would be. It would be evident. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be like, oh, we can't tell if this person died from cancer. We should see m- many more signs of cancer, but we don't. It's extremely rare, and so some t- scientists are saying that that cancers, a lot of cancers, are the result of modern lifestyle. Which it goes back to the whole epigenetics thing. Is that you know forever everyone's had the potential to get cancer. Right. It's just that it's accelerated that we are getting it now. And so the real question is, okay, it's been around forever as a possibility that you could get it, but why is it skyrocketed in the last fifty it's years like or a so? Multitude of factors now. How do you narrow it down? It's like there's well, so yeah. many new things, and, and maybe new that's variables. why it's accelerated so much yeah. because alcohol does it, cigarettes do it, processed foods could potentially that's, that's do my it. Theory, right. Yeah. It's like, everything at once. Right. It's so much that's why it's and that's why you can't pinpoint it to one thing either and this is also why i think people get so pissed off when you try and there is no one cause. yeah right if you just demonize weed or you just demonize alcohol you just demonize uh, cigarettes whatever it's it's the combination of our lifestyle completely mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. speaking of weed uh you just reminded me of something else so i read another article that you guys know what wikileaks is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's where they all that like if, if hackers have information on something they'll release it to wikileaks anonymously and WikiLeaks will, yeah yeah well, post it or whatever, and apparently there were the, all these hacks, hacked emails and stuff that showed that the alcohol um, industry was uh, paying or not bribing, but um, uh, influencing government officials to continue to push for weed prohibition or, or cannabis prohibition. 
So alcohol companies yeah, were duh. literally. I've been telling you guys that shit forever, man. Well, <laughs> yeah. But you know what's funny? So this obvious. is like this is like evidence. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not enough evidence. That I told you I saw it firsthand, or what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, dude? It's been going on for a hot minute, man. Isn't that crazy though? Yeah, yeah it's the confirmation. Well, what, that's sure. how that's how they kick. They one of the number one ways big business eliminates their competition is by using government to legislate their competition out. Oh yeah, of business. That's just what they do. Yeah. That's just what they do. So it's, yeah, it's happened forever. I mean, look at like Tesla and Edison, and you know, it's always like like one versus the other, and then one kind of like pervades at the end. Oh know? man, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think that companies like Marlboro are going to come in and just and Philip Morris or whatever are just going to just destroy everybody, and just take when, over the market when they realize that they can't stop it? Mm-hmm. Like when they when they when when they realize that we need to like that it's going to happen. Well, weed is interesting because you can grow it. You know, you can grow it in your own house. Like, well, you could technically do that with alcohol too, right? That's true. You could do moonshine. Is, we could do, yeah, but it's, it's more way, labor intensive. Yeah, way more labor intensive. Well, you have a lot of I don't know though because you have that's maintaining not, a plant. That's not yeah, true. That's, that's right. Not true. We're asking the guy that's, not that's true done at all. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. Like, I mean, <laughs> growing one weed, one plant. You know right. What I'm yeah. But you're not making no money off of that yeah. to 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 grow enough marijuana to make a. Oh, you're talking about business. Yeah. Well, yeah, to make a legitimate business of it is an operation. It's and you need a lot of things. You can't just be like, oh, I got a backyard and I can grow some weed. No, I'm talking about. I think I thought you were referring to. I thought Justin was referring to just people growing their own. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like just for themselves yeah yeah Yeah. it's it's yeah i think it's uh i mean god you could debate my my brother-in-law make brews his own beer you know Uh once you understand the process and you learn how to do it it's to me it's it's you could do it and you could do really you could be very bad at it the same way people grow weed i mean it's a weed so you could throw it in a pot and you could just throw water on it but you can have some fucking shit you know dirt (laughs) weed (laughs) it's it's not gonna be very yeah nobody wants to smoke that just like nobody would want to drink some terrible beer that someone didn't understand the process it's funny because they're they're finding that in, in states that have legalized cannabis that alcohol consumption drops so the alcohol companies are shitting their pants. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Because when you've got when you're when you have the monopoly on consciousness altering fun drug, which is what alcohol is, right? Alcohol the alcohol industry literally owns the monopoly on like legal drugs that you you have a fun time with your friends, right? right. Yeah. Otherwise, what else can you do that's legal? Marijuana comes out and becomes legal. Now you have an alternative because people that smoke weed what what they're finding is a lot of them stop drinking alcohol or don't drink as much because they don't get a hangover. Yeah, they have fun and it's like, well, I'll just do this instead. Oh no, oh, it's gonna get interesting. I is it like January where they actually roll out the recreational? It'll uh, be legally for recreational. California? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be rad. No, it's gonna be cool. We see the shops pop up. All You're gonna over see the everything like weed gum. You know, yeah. weed toothpaste. Yeah, we'll see, man. We'll it's see. Weed I, shampoo. It's so much better. I, I mean, I think it, it's it's for the good for sure. I think if it's if it's going to cut back on people drinking and driving. Now, mind you, there's still going to be people that are under the influence and driving and doing those things like that. Not nearly. As, not nearly isn't. You don't. It doesn't inhibit your yeah, motor no. skills. No. It, this is, by the way, not. I'm not speaking because I'm. This is my experience. I'm. This is. They've studied it. There's tests yeah. Yeah. that they've done. It's been concluded. It's conclusive that yeah. you can be. You can smoke weed versus drinking and go drive, and you'll operate better. Doesn't mean you'll operate great. It just means no. that you're far less likely. Yeah. We'll yeah. just look you're at the accident. statistics of of people have had like well, and in, in Colorado, right? So like as far as like like crime and you know accidents and all those things, it's all it's gone way down. You know what I heard? It's crazy right now. Who did I just talk to? Some CHP buddy of mine was saying that uh, they're they're scared of the whole texting thing. Mm. Like supposedly texting is surpassing like drinking and driving yeah. and like that as far as danger. Like that everybody actually makes sense. Yeah, yeah and the and you I, you guys notice like more and more often I'll be driving the freeway and I'll look to my left, I'll look to my right. And People like, are texting. Yeah. Everyone's just head down. Yeah, everyone's like driving with their head down and they're <laughs> looking at their lap at the same time. Like oh shit, this yeah. is getting crazy, dude. Yep. I've been, I've actually been at a stoplight like this, right? So yeah, and. Uh, I was the second car, and it was a two-lane light goes green, and both the two front cars were looking down their phone. Like, like waiting. green light went yeah. all the way to a yellow light before they looked like, up and actually oh, took shit. off. You know yes. what's gonna, you know what's going to happen is they're going to make it. They're going to make the punishment because right now, if you get caught texting in your car, it's a it's just a stupid ticket. They're going to turn it into something really big, like yeah. drunk, like drinking and driving. Once yeah. they once they start to make that case and enough, accidents but I happen. think now that being said, we're this close. I feel if you know, obviously I'm on a podcast. People can't see. I'm holding yeah. like my fingers up like one <laughs> inch away, right? We're this close yeah. to uh, all Micro the piece. all the like yeah. Siri and stuff like that, like the voice activation being yeah. so fucking spot on. Like, hey Siri, hey Siri, text. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. 
Text. I'm here. Doug, producer. What do you want to say? Yeah, see, there Tell Doug I think he has a giant, giant penis. <laughs> Your message to Doug, producer says, tell Doug I think he has a giant, giant penis. Wow, they caught that even though you messed it up. Yeah. Send. Yeah. Like that, bro. What did I tell you about? That's Siri, happened. Dude? That's happening. What did I tell you that's about? That's happening Siri? so it's so quick and easy, and it's cl- it's getting better. <laughs> Each time this new phone comes out, it's like, bro. Mm. What did I tell you about? That? You probably set off everybody listening to this. Hey, this thanks for the too. text, really- Adam. <laughs> 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 you guys, you need to turn your Siri off, dude. It's always listening. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, no, it's not okay. I'm not a f- bro. I'm not like fucking worried like my little brother is. Like that the government's really watching me. Like I, they, I'm not there yet. Yeah. I'll turn it off when I'm like big shit, bro. When I'm like that big, where like they might be listening to me. Like there's a million other people they're gonna listen yeah. to before they listen to my bullshit. I'm not <laughs> running for president. Yeah, they yeah, don't give I mean, a fuck yeah. about what I'm saying. Uh, right that's now. not happening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I have no plans to in the future. So it's like I because that would make sense too if you're like, well, you know, I might get into politics in like ten yeah. or fifteen years. Uh-huh. Don't want them to hear me talking about all that racist shit or that bullshit sexist shit that I was saying <laughs> yeah. earlier just jokes jokes with my friends around the campfire like nah that fucking ain't whatever dude yeah. uh, I, I think that's you guys see all the shit that's coming out something else just came out oh man another person got accused the sports world right now they're taking the sports world under right now so now they're getting into these a lot of these like Brett Favre just got I think it was Brett Favre who got accused of some shit one of the other passes dick pic thing one of the yeah one of the other announcers got so now they're getting all I mean it's all Hollywood still right so it's all like the the celebrities fo- yeah all these uh, celebrity announcers and shit that were ex athletes mm. a lot of people coming forward on them now it's getting crazy yeah. every day in the news there's like at least there's one to, push on one to right three now. people that are like big name people that are getting taken down with the whole sexual harassment take thing. them down and they are you know brennan schaub and um uh what's, brian Callen. yeah and brian were were talking i guess on their show katrina told me this and said that they were like they were all all the comedians were talking like dude what if i mean if people were to go back on all the things that you've said or done like would you and they're like fuck yeah i'd be in fucking in trouble of course i've <laughs> said some shit i wasn't supposed to say so at what point does this get out of control like at what point like right now we're all like rooting for these people like yeah where's yeah, the, the statues the, of limitations right when, for, where's where's the free speech at and where yeah. where do we start to flirt with those so down? here's the thing it doesn't matter because if you're again you learn this in politics if you're somebody with a lot of power or you're doing really well, all it takes is an accusation. That's it. You're fucked. Right. It, all it takes is somebody to say that you did something back in 1987. Yeah. That was terrible. Which I feel like that's kind of fucked and up, you man. Could, you I was could, seven years old. And right. you, could yeah. prove, you could prove that you didn't or make the case that you didn't, but it doesn't matter because public opinion, you know how powerful public opinion is when you're a celebrity? It's everything. Mm. What the public thinks of you is everything. It has nothing to, whether or not you go to jail or not, like that doesn't matter at this point now it's everybody thinks that that's who you are and what you did right right so people can really fuck with you what do you think about there was that one football player that went to jail for a few years and then the girl came out and admitted that she lied that he she she said he raped her but then she came out and said she didn't oh right who was so that? they let him out but he ended up not playing football he ended up mis- losing years of his life cuz he was in prison do you think people who falsely accuse Others like that should go to jail. Hundred percent. Yeah, so do I. Hundred percent. You fuck somebody's life up like that, you should go the fuck yeah, down, you bro. Pay the penalty. Hell yes, you should. Yeah, I, I, it works both ways, man. You know, you want people to take you seriously. You know, so if you're not, if you lie about it, then you you should be accountable to that. Mm-hmm. Well, especially when you're like you could you could potentially fuck someone's entire life. You could set you could change their whole life yeah, by doing that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. And what sucks? Detrimental. And you know? what sucks? Even someone like that. Even when they probably, I don't even know who you're talking about. But when they come out afterwards, like that person's already been tarnished. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. people will still connect that. I re- I remember how pissed I was. Yeah. So this, I, did, I don't know if I shared this story on on Mind Pump, mm. but I was. Let's see here. This is 2000 and around 2004, 2005. So I'm 20, about 24 years old, and I'm managing. This was when I managed Hillsdale. And it was really common. I used to uh, do like these uh, staff barbecues at my house all the time. So I had a nice little place, and I had uh, I would get the UFC fight. I would throw a barbecue, oh, you know, invite yeah. all my trainers mm-hmm. and staff over, and you know, feed them. And you know, I had a, most everybody was over twenty one, so there was always be like a few beers in the fridge. I didn't get no keg. It wasn't a party. It was a barbecue. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. it was a barbecue, and people could have drinks here and there and stuff. Well, I had done this for years already, and never had any problems. Well. This one year, I have a, uh, a a new trainer who's working for me who's at this party, and then there's a front desk girl. And the front desk girl ends up uh, 
claiming that the my trainer ended up trying to force himself on her. And it actually happened outside of my house, but it happened, you know, around that time at my party. Like so they was, were at the party and left. Yes, they were at the party, then they went out. You know, and the irony of it was, you know, she was sitting on his lap the whole time while they were watching the fights and they were looked like they were all vibing right, each right. other as it was. And then, you know, I went to bed, everybody kind of went their different directions. Some people were still out of my deck talking and, and kind of hanging out and shit like that. And they went somewhere else on my property out there. And she said that he forced him on her. So I got, I almost, I was this close to getting fired, dude. I mean, they, they brought me in. And if it wasn't for me being like a top performer, I would, they would have never, they would fucking cut their losses right what was the What was the reasoning for you getting in well, trouble? Well, that's because it was- Just for hosting the Because I hosted the party, man. Because you had alcohol? Yeah. Were yeah. they all under age? Were they over No, 21? everyone was over, over age. Didn't matter, dude. Didn't matter because something like that happened. They wanted, they wanted to take me down over it. And what fucked me was I was 24 years old when that happened, right? So it was a major learning lesson for me about fraternizing with my staff. Right. So from that point on, even now, though you did nothing wrong, and Justin remembers yeah. me that because these guys and I, there were a couple times I came out with them, but for the most part, I'd be like, you know, yeah. I can't, I can't party with you guys because of that. What happened to me? So that happened to me before him, and it forever changed the course of my career there because I was forever blackballed. Yeah. I was forever the guy that was irresponsible and would do that, and it just was fucking bad luck on my part. You know, it was really shitty that I was doing something good because, I mean, and that fuck, they potentially fucked my career. Like, I, in my mm -hmm. mind as a kid, like, I was on pace to, I want to be a VP, I'm in this way. We were both blackballed, bro. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure we yeah. were. I, and, and that wasn't- Mine was for different reasons. Yeah. But. Mine was, I mean, that was the, the shitty part, and that's what, that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, that because was like the start of it, where I was like, nah. I was also the first club that ever got, so when I started for the with the company, uh, HR and LP didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So loss prevention and HR didn't exist within our company when I started with him and then I was there I'm, I'm trying to remember the lady's name that was the uh, long blonde hair starts with a J it was either Jill or I don't remember J uh, but I hated her yeah I didn't like her at I all. hated her yeah I don't <laughs> I didn't like her at all well so she, she was an evil bitch she was she, yeah, I don't know if for I real her. she came into the company and she was super I mean they, they came in a clean house right this company grew to a, a billion dollar company mm. it had over 300 something clubs thousands of employees she working was for just it on a mission with to, no HR yeah. right so it was the wild wild west when we were there back then I mean you could what was really and this was common this was like a normal thing because we used to sell we used to sell um, memberships with personal training attached to it and it was but the people that were buying the membership they didn't know any better they just said okay it's $800 for 3 years and you have your renewal and you have five personal training sessions that come with it but you were really charged for the personal training separately it was like $240 right, 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 right. and then the membership was you know really like 500 something dollars whatever right so a lot of these members they didn't want a personal trainer you know about yeah, i'd say 20% 20 or 30% people had five personal some of them just got it for the right. the price so something that was super normal would be people trainers would clock those hours in and that sounds crazy, like it's yeah. simple. But what they do, what you would do is you would so you would call these people to get in, mm -hmm. and they'd be like, "No, thank you, no, thank you, I don't want it." And then you say, "Okay, well, come in, sign them off, and say you don't want them." And they'd sign the signatures off, and then the trainers would clock them in for hours. That was the fucking thing that everybody mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. Everybody did that, and for obvious reasons, not good for the company. Right? right, right. Obviously, not good for the company, and obviously, they want to clean that up. Well, guess what? I'm the very first club. I'm only I'm only a manager for maybe six months at this time. I'm the first club that gets audited now. I'm on. I'm not on the impression like this, is, and I, I know that it's coming, right? They tell you like you know, uh, HR is coming around. These are the things they're looking for. They're doing. So my staff is like, I got all my staff on point. We're not doing shit like that. They're changing the guard. It's a new. But what do they do? They go to my file cabinet. They go to my files that I have that have got the last five years before, See? and they start pulling files and they start going See, back bro, checking. This is, here's the problem. The problem is you kept files. Yeah, you should be like me. Oh, I so, had no fucking. Well, so, so, what happened, so this is what happens to me. So Disorganized. I'm, so I'm the first guy that gets gets audited. I'm the very first club in the Bay Area that gets audited by this chick, right? So they come in and they audit me. And I, of course, you checked my last five years, fucking almost every trainer that's worked there has, it was caught for this. So of course they can't fire the whole staff and fire me. So I get this huge warning and there's this big old deal. Well, I call all the rest of my peers and tell guys like you, Hey, they're coming in and this is what they're looking for. Get rid of any documentation that you have. So they, everybody else fucking shredded their shit, lit it on fire got rid of any of these old files that could get them in trouble. And so I was the guy who was known for having the club that had all the bad, <laughs> dirty trainers that worked for him. And it's oh, like, man. no, you motherfucker, everybody did it. I just happened to be the first one. And then, so first I was blackballed for that. Well, the, the way just, a lot of clubs would do it too is they would have the trainers sign, get those signed off, but then work the floor 
right. to get paid. Yeah, they still stuff. had to work. Yeah, they still were on the clock for that, but it was totally it was fraudulent. Hundred percent, it was sure. fraudulent. And but you know, as a twenty year old kid, when I came in. I was trained to do that. I was taught like, oh, this is what you do. You know, if they don't want them, you just sign them off and you can just clock them in when you're doing your floor hours and get paid more. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. So I was on the hustle whenever I could to get people who, if you didn't want them, I would work my ass off to convince you to come in to sign them off so I could get paid more money while I was working the floor. So <laughs> yeah, it just sucks that it was, that happened first. It took me a good four or five years to, to get my name back. Like as far, and then, I be, then I'm the top guy forever. Right. And so now I'm getting looked at like, okay, he's the man. Maybe I'm up in line for being a DM. And then that happens. And then that happens. It was just like, this, that was it. It was over for me. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> from then on, I was like, they're forever yeah, going to keep uh, me in this position, yeah. you know, because they're not going to If fuck. there's a list, if there was a list in those days of Forget like, it. like the actual blacklist, right. Of these top performers we can't get rid of, but we can't really do anything else with them because they're, you know, yeah. I guarantee you, I know Adam's name was on there and my name was on there for sure. <laughs> for sure. And mine, mine was on there mainly because I had a big mouth. Yeah. Because I used to talk a lot of shit. And because I did walk out. That's right. I did yeah, walk out yeah, and quit did, like that. You did that. Yeah. And the whole staff left like with a me. Gangster. I forgot about that part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was pretty. <laughs> Just a few. Peace. That was pretty bad. Just Dude, a few so, uh, I, my, so I got to give you, share a little story with you guys. Either my girlfriend has the best immune system on the planet or that Four Sigmatic Chaga is fucking magic. Oh, has she been Ooh. taking it consistently? So she had... Uh, God, I wish I liked it more. So people are getting... You don't like the taste? Yeah. I can't it's get mushrooms, bro. I know. I know. I'm having a really hard time getting by it. You got to give me some... You got to come up with some... There's got to be some recipes There's for it some, to make it better. It's fucking... Just drink it. Just you love okay. the health benefits of it. Fuck right? you, bro. Yeah. You're... You're a fucking weirdo. Hold like on, I, hold on. You, I, you, you, got, you, you got me. To, you're you, talking about the tincture. I'm talking about the the four sigmatic powder that they actually that they, they yeah, flavor a little I'm not bit. A big, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of the taste either. So I'm trying to. And you, you got to remember right now. You got me taking all this other shit too that tastes like dog shit. Mm -hmm. I can't just eat dog shit all day long just just for the better mind. I can't. You do make it. it sound like it's a big bowl of dog shit that you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally fucking. You can put it in six, like even six ounces of water, and just shoot it. That's, yeah. I mean, that's what I have to, it's, but it still leaves a, the, the ashwagandha, the tincture is. Well, the tincture's that, the tincture's a whole nother That's game. what I'm talking about. Well, you remember, you got me doing that yeah. too. So I'm yeah. doing that, plus I'm taking the pills, plus I'm putting no, red so lights on my balls. I'm doing all kinds of shit right now. Are you doing right the red lights now. on yeah, the balls Yeah, doing all this kind of crazy Wait, hold shit. hold on a second. The red lights are still in here. Have yeah. you been shining your balls in the gym? Yeah, whatever oh, yeah. I can. I'm going to take it home though, by the way. Just Please, so you know. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And don't touch your balls on it. I don't want yeah. that happening in here. Taylor gets all uncomfortable when he want, walks in and I have my pants down. Uh, I don't want ball you gotta be careful walking juice around on here. it or no, whatever. I don't think you're supposed to get closer than six inches. Yeah. yeah that's as close as I get. Yeah, exactly. It still gives you two inches. You just get excited. So anyway, so my girl was, because I had some kind of virus and I think that's why I got that vertigo, which I had another fucking episode this morning. But anyway, yeah. she got really like, she got swollen glands. She was getting really hot. Her ear hurt. She had looked like she had a fever. So I give her elderberry and then I give her chaga and she goes to sleep and fucking she wakes up with nothing. Totally fine. Totally fine. I, I really That's believe, awesome. I believe that we all have like this window, like when you feel like something coming on and like being proactive versus like, am I sick? I'm not sure. I don't I mean, know, man. Some people's immune systems are just, my girl just, you know, but I gave her the chaga. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, and they are, we are sponsored by them. So I'm going to give them credit for go. Sigmatic Chaga cured her illness. Oh, look at that, dude. <laughs> like, just, just like that. Just, <laughs> just a blanket yeah. statement. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I will, I want you, because you're the one who, you you drink it the most, and I'm not, I'm totally not anti-drinking it, because. but I feel like I'm already drinking coffee. I have my, like, my warm, we drink tea every once, hot tea every once in a while. I, I you got, know there's got to be a way to dress it up. Yes. This there's got to be a way to dress it up. This is what you do. You know when you drink your Diet Coke? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been drinking that right yeah, now. Don't lie to me. No, I'm not. I'm not don't right now. In fact, I just Katrina me. wanted to pick up Coke Zero, and I'm like, no, we, we, uh, we've, we've had it. We had it the week. You had before. no. You have no, You've had no Diet Coke the past couple days. Not a couple days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had it about a week ago. Oh, so, okay, well, yeah. that's not bad. Yeah, just yeah. adding like steam. No, dude, I'm very. I'm help, like, right? I, I openly yeah. admit and talk about this shit on the show, so others can grow and learn from my bullshit. It doesn't, but mm. I do not like condone people drinking Diet Cokes every single day and I for sure can become that guy yeah. and I'm very aware when I've been putting some streaking and for me it's easy because I feel like uh, I my body uh, expresses it when I'm drinking diet sodas I definitely hold water weight in my face so we always talk about my fat face right <laughs> 
So <laughs> yes, uh, all the time. It's ex- me and Justin talking yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> we were well, talking about before we saw you. It's there. extra bad when I'm drinking soda or if I got wheat. If I if I got gluten in the diet. So if I got gluten in the diet, you if I'm drinking puffy. so those two things and my psoriasis, like mm. psoriasis, not so much connected to the diet sodas. That's more to the wheat. Yeah, that's mm. more to the wheat the wheat side. But the puffiness and the holding water for sure to the soda. Like I definitely mm. get bloated from it. And you know it's crazy. It's and I I never really noticed this until I really tried to actively stop drinking so much. After my first like drink of the soda, as much as I love it, I have to I have to do this major burp right afterwards, like right away, and uh. I and my burps are nasty, and so it's like oh. my stomach's like telling me it doesn't belong. All oh, this in sounds here. amazing, but yeah, it's crazy because you I'm addicted to the artificial sweetener that's in it, and mm. so my body I, I want it right, my brain wants it. But my stomach is you could uh, is obviously rejecting it. I don't burp all day long. Then all of a sudden, I take a sip. It's of this. also also the aspartame in there. Some people will argue can act like an excitotoxin to the to your brain. Mm. So it might not be good for your brain either. So I would suggest uh, using lion's mane to combat that. Yeah. And lion's I don't mane know, and I want, and I, every time I openly talk about stuff, I get this flood of fucking like advice dude like so yeah i got it i know yeah. i know i'm not supposed to be drinking it i openly share it with you guys so you guys know we're fucking human too and there's a things bunch of start- dms oh, right now i do i get a ton of dms do 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 this do this do this everybody <laughs> wants to be the professional who fucking told me how to what how to handle my fucking issue here sometimes right? it's helpful though you know like you know even you you found and, and researched you know as far as my heartburn is concerned somebody else dm me like the same exact thing you yeah. know like, maybe you should try you know this and the hel pills and i'm like oh, okay fuck it you know if i'm getting this from a couple people i'll, I'll give it a shot yeah. the best so. advice i've got so far with the whole psoriasis and issues i deal with has been the vitamin d thing for sure mm-hmm. but that was a that was a missing piece that i hadn't connected yet um that and that's helped out as far as like the whole soda thing that's purely an addiction thing i'm purely addicted to artificial sweeteners i'm 100 percent aware of it and you know i also want to live my life too there's certain things that i like a soda with you know what i'm saying and i just prefer diet soda over regular soda i don't regular soda is just like way over sweet for me i don't like the way it tastes it's just the but there's certain things that I, I want that with and so i try and find balance to where it's like eh, it's not something i want to catch myself doing every single day but it's something that when i when i occasionally want it with something i, I do that but i know real quick when i haven't had it in a while and i introduce it it's you know you notice right away like how fast my body gets <laughs> Back to wanting Damn. it the whole time, so mm. we got some goodies from. Thrive. Oh, oh, oh I was like waiting for the bird. Yeah, we're doing another unboxing. Ooh, we are Thrive unboxing. What did you get us today, Doug? Oh, you know it's three days till Christmas when this airs, so I got some holiday stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forget Christmas is coming. I know it's like Crazy. right it's this Next week, week, dude. Yeah. yeah, this is weekend. All right, what's 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 first, Doug? Did you get one something for each of us, or or one thing for all of no, us? No, we can share it. Okay, a lot of sharing. Right. Going on. Look at that. We're not good at sharing. We've got ourselves a gluten-free graham cracker crust. Anybody who wants to make oh, a for pie, pie. Oh, wow. yeah. like, a, like a cheesecake pie or something. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, that is cool. Uh, <laughs> feel less horrible about myself. <laughs> <laughs> and some organic pudding. Oh, so you can fill that pie with that pudding. Pudding. I feel like Adam loves pudding. Yeah. Did you tell us I, once you were a big. Did pudding you fan? buy that protein pudding? I didn't. That's oh, what you're that's right. Yeah, that's that, what you're thinking about. That's it. what I was thinking about. Yeah. I haven't had pudding in a really long time. Oh, that would be. I used to, as a kid. I liked tapioca. Oh, I love really? tapioca. Yeah, I used to love. Never that. liked it. Oh, yeah. I liked the, uh, the 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 chocolate. Yeah. See, chocolate. I don't like. I'm not a big. Cho- I've never been a chocolate guy. Like mm. a chocolate pudding, chocolate mm. ice cream, too too chocolate. Yeah, I'm just like chocolate peanut butter. That's I'm a vanilla. That's like I'm all a vanilla. I'm a vanilla guy. for me. Yeah. Mm. Are you vanilla or chocolate, Sal? Vanilla. Yeah, you're vanilla yeah. too. Are you just so you're chocolate, Justin? He's chocolate. He's like a girl. Yeah. yeah. I like that chocolate. I could see chocolate all over his face. I can, see, <laughs> can, you, can you picture him eating ice cream cone? Just chocolate all over his face. Well, everything to, ends up all over my face. I don't face. have to. We've seen yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys always like take pictures, talk shit. You know. It's fine. All right, Doug. All right. We got coconut cream in a can. Oh. Excellent. Say I'll what? take that. Organic heavy coconut cream. That's cool. Coconut so if you make cream. a sh- if you want to make a bulking shake, you want to gain weight and you I can't see. have dairy. <coughs> it's like a topper. It's like or a yeah. non-dairy. Or topping. throw some of that in your coffee. Doug right just basically put together an excellent pie. Are you making us a pudding pie right now? Oh yeah. yeah. What's next? Uh, another can of that. Okay, oh, good. good. So two of those. Did you know, what I want to try. I, now you, that, now you, that order? You, re, you refilled the nitro brew, I'm going to take that coconut cream and mix oh. it with some of our nitro. Oh, that's a good shit. idea. And I bet you make a nice genius. Little, yes, that's, go, you, that's did, going down right now. Did yeah. you order Justin's organic dildo finally? Uh, it has to be organic. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Like it has to like bio disintegrate or something. <laughs> okay, we got some epic bone broth. And it's turkey cranberry sage. Oh, I love that. Ooh. Now I know you fuck with the bone broth the most. Like, do you? Yeah. Uh, what do you put? Like, just put it on your steak, or what do you? What do you? He slap. What do you? It. Where do you use it the most? What do you mean? Where do I just drink it? God, what you're just fucking drink, yeah. weird. He's the dude. worst. To ask what, you never had stuff. soup. I'm glad we have some people that connect yeah. with you. Hold on yeah. a second. You never had yeah, soup you can before. Put it in the soup, right? You never drank soup. Yeah, yeah of course. But okay, po- it's the same fucking thing. You warm it up and you drink it like soup. It yeah. tastes good like that. Fuck yeah, it's good. Really? Yes. <laughs> it's good. You just it's add. Good. I liked it on my steak. You know what I'm saying? It sounds like a, like a good like a, vegetable. Like a, like a gel, like a like gel you on, your, on your steak. It's mm. good. It goes with the steak, good, but I can't imagine mm. drinking it. What's the last thing there? there? Mm. No, we have more. Oh. This is epic turkey bites. Oh, Ooh, cool. Beef jerky oh. or turkey jerky? I'm in. Turkey jerky. Turkey jerky. Dude, we have a whole family of turkey that just like. Now, are these? is this all Thrive Market brand or are these other off brands? No, these are all different brands. Oh, okay. No Thrive in this. Okay. No Thrive in this one? Except for these that Justin's asked for peanuts because I never get peanuts. Yes. Mm. You and misunderstood him. I'm a him. peanut fan. Are, are, they, say, are they salt? No, no, no. You they, misunderstood him. He didn't peanuts. Say, uh, Justin didn't say, I don't. He did not say, I want salty peanuts. Peanuts. He said he penis. Said, I want penis. Penis, Doug. <laughs> penis. Penis. Are those. Uh, are are those salty or unsalty? Yeah, I was just they're, hitting they're on They're salted. Them. Oh, they're salted. Oh, good. Oh, that sounds good right now. Yeah, and we'll then be- the last thing is we got some organic candy canes, so they must be healthy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did uh, you guys see the post I they did at Bitly? candy canes. So we, had to, we did candy canes this year. So our Christmas tree upstairs is uh, like I themed, right? Have I ever told you guys my, my issue with Christmas trees and the, the whole thing, the whole theming no, of it? Okay. No, I know you go all out with these uh, so, yeah, decorations. Yeah, so I'm all into the decoration thing, but I'm also... So going back to like, it's funny how these things, like I didn't put this together till I got older. Like when I first started, I first got my house and then I started cr- Christmas decorating. I do like, um, you know, I go all out on it, but I, it has to, I, I like it to look fucking really good. And when I was a kid, like we just, we couldn't do that. We couldn't afford all these really cool decorations all over the house with that. So my mom made do with what we had and shit. And it looked like fucking Charlie Brown-esque. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> our, our Christmas tree, would, our, we had the Christmas tree that had like popcorn on it, had the fucking all the different colors. Match, some oh, of the, even with the popcorn? The, the top lights were like solid red. The bottom ones were like the like m- cutting out multicolored. And then those. one more string of the strand yeah. was like flashing. It was just like, you know, whatever we could put together to put it all together. And, and now the rest of my siblings, I think they all love it like that, and that's fine. But for me, like I like like the Macy's tree, you know, like it has to be. It's like it has a theme. It's yeah. themed. It has a color. It has a, it's color coordinated. Like the lights it's match classy. with the ornaments that you have on there. So what's your theme? Uh, uh, this year, it's just it's red. It's red and white, right? So everything's red. Everything's red and white. So all the lights are red or white. All the ornaments are red or white. And there's candy canes because there's it's red and white. So this year we did candy canes. Well, I haven't done candy canes on my tree in a long time. We put them on. We put them on all over the tree, not thinking that the boys would want peppermint fucking candy. Your dogs ate it. Yeah, oh, and I don't no. know why I didn't. Did it, they get sick? No, they were fine because they only had they only had one. That was yeah. uh, I saw we saw the wrapper on the floor. And we thought, oh, son of a bitch! But remember last year, I told you guys what happened with Bentley, where you know he ate a joint. He ate mm. the whole joint because oh, it yeah. was wrapped in peppermint. Uh, wrapping and I should have fucking thought of that I totally forgot about that I didn't think that the dogs would go they're not like that they don't go eat just anything they're like super particular about what they eat and they I didn't think they would eat but that but he likes peppermint he must like peppermint so Bentley has a thing for peppermint <laughs> he's a Christmas dog yeah. <laughs> bring, bring on, on the, the bird. bird this quaz brought to you by Organifi for those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from AC Longyear. Is it still wise to feed a cold and starve a fever? Hmm. Angela, mm-hmm. she's a good friend of I've mine. Heard that this is a really good. A this is a really good. Yeah, this is a really good question right here. You know, I, I always tell people. Yeah, what's your experience with this? So I I tell people tons of water because I think that the most common thing I think people don't drink a lot of water during mm-hmm. this time. I think uh, if I were to look back at all the times that I was sick. Uh, I neglect how much fluid that uh, I'm drinking. And anecdotally speaking, when I 
make myself like I go, okay, I'm going to get a half a gallon to a gallon of water today while I'm swimming. I, I feel so much better. So much, I recover a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a, all normally like the first go to. I say that you've got me on the Edelberry going uh, yeah. now doing that. Every Elderberry. Time. El, did I say Edelberry? Edelberry. Edel yeah. I keep doing that, dude. <laughs> 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 That's I love. Can I tell you something? You just what? battle axe. You love that. Can I tell you something? If great. you were to all of a sudden start pronouncing all words <laughs> accurately, yeah. I'd be sad inside. Can we? I love that I about feel like you. We need an audible book. Uh, you know, if we ever do a mind pump book, I want Adam to read it. You have to. Yeah. yeah. I love that you do. Yeah. That. You know, it's it's, so, it's so, I'm so. You know why this, this is why it works? It's charming. Most yep. really, really other intelligent men that it's I just meet, you have a lazy tongue. They That's all it is. They, <laughs> lazy. Yeah. It is because the is brain. See, the, the, the brain. See, like if you were to ask me to take like a sp like all the words that I fuck up. The, the irony in this is if you were to ask me to take like a spelling test, like you gave me all the words that I fucked up. I'll spell it right. Yeah. If I had to sit there, sound it out, do it. But <laughs> for some reason, my tongue just don't keep up with what the fuck's going through the brain every now and then. <laughs> said we've said it. I've had those a million times. You think I'd fucking know how to say it right? You know the the, <clears throat> the irony of this. So old wisdom. Sorry, I'm eating some of this uh, Thrive Market jerky. <clears throat> yeah, turkey jerky. So the irony of this is, that's an old adage. Right? It's been around for a long time. In fact, uh, some of the earliest uh, records of this advice of feeding a cold, starving a fever, mm -hmm. date back to 1500s. Believe it or not. Wow. That's that's the oldest that we've seen. Um, but we've also heard, um, you know, philosophers talking about how fasting is the best way to cure an illness. Yeah. And, yeah. So this advice has been around for a long time. And one of the things that we tend to do with old advice is if it doesn't have a scientific study backing it, we, we, we dismiss it. We dismiss it completely. Yeah. But the reason why something has lasted as long as it's lasted <laughs> it's many worked, times it's worked for a lot of people is that there may be some truth. <laughs> right. And I we find say, yeah, this is definitely one of those I feel like I've I've applied, you know, for the most part. I mean, it it, it has it, you know, held up uh, just in my own like like experience and like experience with people around me. So. Yeah, we find we find uh, this to be in fact actually okay. So the funny thing is, I actually looked this up when when I was writing the question down. I looked it up, and they did do a study on this on this exact thing, and they found that with animals with mice, when they have a viral infection, if they feed them, they tend to get better sooner. If they have a bacterial infection. If they feed them, not only do they not get better sooner, but some of them actually die. Well, that makes sense because you're feeding the, the infection, right? You're feeding the bacterial infection if you're giving it food. So by starving it, you're hoping you're going to well, start they, off and kill, kill it, They right? took it a, ne a step further. Okay. And they said, okay, well, what is it about the food that is causing the, bac the infection caused by bacteria to get worse? And so they took these mice and they gave them this drug that blocks uh, glucose metabolism. So that they could feed the animals or whatever, and they're not going to process sugar, and the animals did just fine. Mm. So they identified it was the sugar. It was glucose or carbohydrates or sugar that was bad for a bacterial infection. And the theory, the current theory, is that uh, some of these bacteria produce these inflammatory byproducts that affect the brain. And if the brain runs off of ketones, mm -hmm. then it can handle it much better. If it's running off of sugar, it can't because sugar itself, sugar metabolism causes a lot more waste products. In fact, scientists will say that running off of ketones is a cleaner source of fuel for the brain. Mm -hmm. This is why people in, um, you know, have like Alzheimer's and stuff seem to do better when they go on a ketogenic diet or when they, when they well, supplement with ketones. That's why you feel that sharpness, that clarity, you know, when, you, when you're fasted for Glucose a metabolism. Of time. You could yeah. have an issue with glucose metabolism. So what they're saying, what the researchers are saying is that, you know, starving a fever is probably a smart thing. And feeding a cold, which is viral, because colds are viral, it's also probably a smart thing. Here's the thing. I thought about this for a second after, afterwards as well, and I said, okay, am I hungry when I have a cold? And the answer is yes. When I have a cold, I usually don't have a problem with my appetite. But when I have a fever, I for sure don't want to eat. For sure, when I have a fever, I, I want to stay away from food. Mm -hmm. And this is observed in, in all animals. When there's an acute infection, all animals will uh, self-administer a form of anorexia where they don't want to eat. Right. You see it's this, a very you natural see, We just thing. talked about this the other day. This mm -hmm. is what you see with dogs. Like dogs, mm -hmm. if they have a stomach, they've got something going on with their stomach and they're they're bothered by it, though they're not going to eat their food. Mm -hmm. Like you put a bowl of food in front of them, they won't eat it. They'll go out, eat grass, make themselves throw right. up, and they won't, they'll, stay, they'll refrain from food. 
And it's also when you know to take your dog in with if he hasn't ate any food for a, you know, 24 or 48 hours, he keeps going on like that. Then you yeah, take him in because you, right. That yeah. he could have something seriously going on inside of him. Right. Yeah. So it's like a normal little thing. That, it's funny because we, we tend to forget listening to our body. We, we want to ignore it so bad. We think we know what's best and your body's literally telling you don't eat. So that's probably what's going to be what's going to be best for it. Um, fluids are important, though. I, I think, like you said, dehydration is one of the biggest, especially with kids. When kids are sick, yeah, uh, that's what I, I you get. The, that's the most common thing. That's the most hydrate. common thing for me with like clients and helping people and myself. That has been the biggest game changer. Was and I remember it wasn't until like years later being a trainer that I like ever even like looked into my like, paid attention. Like, how much water do I drink? I'm like, and I yeah. like had my gallon. I was like, oh shit, like. I'm laying around for two, three days sick, and I, I didn't even put like a whole two glasses of water down. Like, let me try and like actively drink and drink and drink and flush and flush. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh shit, I went through that cold way faster by making sure that I was drinking a lot of fluid. So that's that's the first one. But let's talk about, I mean, since we're here, what are some of the tips that you guys give clients and, and protocols like nutritionally, liquid or fluid wise, everything like that, that you would do for each of these? Uh, I know for, you're you're big on also zinc too. Zinc yeah, is zinc. A, <clears throat> yeah. So so if you're so a few things. If you're getting sick or you feel like you're getting sick, rest is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean you need to necessarily not move or do anything. So what about the old theory of sweating it out, like going in a sauna or doing cardio to sweat? I know people that have done that before too, where they they don't feel good and they intentionally try and go to sweat sweat it out. Like the problem is just like a rhinovirus versus. No, like- I, see, here's the problem. The problem with uh, stressing your body with exercise. Yeah. Exercise strengthens the immune system afterwards. I agree. During. I just wanted yeah. to hear what you had to yeah. say. No, that. during during. In fact, there's been cases of people having infections and then forcing themselves to work out and getting the infection so bad that they die because it's forced the infection deeper into the lungs. Or it's forced the, the infection through the bloodstream to the heart. Uh, it weakens exercise temporarily weakens the immune system mm-hmm. because it's a stress on the body. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything. Like I think going outside, getting some fresh air and some sunlight, and going for a walk is probably a good thing. Partially because like you're getting circulation sunshine. wise too. Yeah. yeah, and you're also getting some sunshine, right. and that vitamin D is good for that. But um, I would avoid foods that irritate your gut because your gut. If your gut is off, you get that kind of inflammation. It's going to inhibit your body or reduce your body's ability to fight infection. Mm-hmm. I, so I would stay away from foods I'm intolerant to. Um, I would rest, not exercise. Elderberry is one of the few natural things that has been shown to uh, actually reduce the ability of a virus to replicate. Um, so I would. What about with- uh, echinacea? Echinacea is up in the air. The, the studies on echinacea are 50-50. <clears throat> as to whether or not it's beneficial or not. Um, so, But that's one of them, right? Um, chaga, we just talked about chaga. Uh, Chinese medicine will recommend uh, mushrooms quite a bit, chaga being one of them, reishi being another one. Um, four sigmatics got, the, got good ones. Um, zinc, lozenges, when you suck on zinc, it the coating of zinc in the back of the throat, it creates a surface where the rhinovirus can't adhere to and replicate. So then you it just goes down and you digest it so you don't replicate the virus in the back of your throat and get the sore throat and all that stuff. Well, and you see too people like they want to get as much vitamin C as possible, which I always am like very cautious because like there's these products like your, your vitamin C, like the instant vitamin mm-hmm. C and they try and like overly do vitamin c like crazy not knowing you know it's a it's a it's a vitamin just like any any of the rest you can overdo it so most uh, most studies will show no benefit from vitamin c but some studies show that in the early stages of a viral infection if you mega dose vitamin c it reduces the severity and then uh, mm. cuts off days off. Of Which is why they, they they there's a huge market around emergency and right, airborne. Right, right. And these kind, that's it's like that you, came but you the uh, you got to hit it early, right? That's yeah. the thing. That's and the key. That's what I meant earlier when we talked about that. Like I really feel like, and that's a major. Like there is, I believe everybody has this window, and it's uniquely different for everybody. That okay, if I even think remotely, my body's feeling off, and I get on top of that, and I start drinking the emergency early. I do tend to feel like sometimes I can either one mitigate how bad the cold is, or uh-huh. you know go through it a lot faster. Versus me going like oh, I'm not sure if I don't feel well. No, mm-hmm. I think I'm okay, and then waking up in the morning going like Oh fuck, I'm sick. You know, and then yeah, yeah. by that time it's too late. Emergency, I can take all the emergency I want. I don't feel like I make a difference. Yeah, the biggest thing because we're in the season, right? Where people are getting sick. The that's why this is a good question. The biggest think? one is when you get a viral infection or a viral you know uh, sickness like a cold. 
and then it turns into a secondary uh, acute bacterial infection. Or So a lot of times you'll see people who will get a cold, and then the cold will kind of start to go away, but then they get a sinus infection. Mm. And this is a big problem with a lot of people, because then in sinus infection, now you're dealing with something that is a big pain in the ass. Most sinus infections are viral, contrary to popular belief. Most of them are not bacterial. But one of the best ways to prevent a sinus infection is to keep mucus moving or draining properly. Um, so steam is really good. Um, mucinex, uh, I don't know if you guys ever take, you know, the, the drug mm-hmm. mucinex or whatever. Yeah, it thins, that. that thins mucus, so that can help. Um, I actually read a study that when people did mucinex and Sudafed at the early stages of a cold, it like dramatically reduced their potential or mm. the, their infection rate what later on. What about that with flush that people do too for the nasal, nasal flush? Yeah, nasal uh, you're flush. talking about the uh, neti pot. Neti yeah. pot, yeah. So I neti, use, I use that for my allergies. So yeah, neti pot's good for allergies, but let's say you have uh, like bacteria in your sinuses, or, or if you, you have, have inflammation in there, and or, you don't want to be squirting that up there when you're when you're all inflamed. Or let's say you have a virus, right? Mm. Sometimes blowing your nose really really hard or using a neti pot will force uh, the the virus into the smaller crevices of the of the sinuses that don't don't necessarily drain as well, and then they sit there, and then that's when it manifests into a sinus infection. That's happened to me before, where I have a yeah, cold. Yeah, I've only used the neti pot for my allergies. I have it. I've never right? used it. I, I use it, I use it a lot. Yeah. No, I use it a lot for my it, – it, it's a game changer. Like, yeah. So just the other day, we had that really windy day we had, dust everywhere. And so I thought, man, you'll, you'll get – and you heard me this morning sneezing already. Like my allergies have been on fire the last few days mm-hmm. because of that really windy day. Going in there and doing a neti pot, like m- night night and day difference for me for that. For that, like I wouldn't use it for. I've never used it for a cold or a sickness like that. Huh. Yeah. The cool thing too about something like elderberries, you can give it to your kids – um, so that's what I do when my kids start getting sick. I'll give them the elderberry, and it's, mm-hmm. it's like I said, it's the only th- one of the only few things that actually has real studies showing that it it has some uh, efficacy against what's your the th- flu. What's your thoughts on this? So and again, I'm speaking this is totally anecdotal, like with myself. I was always somebody who used to. I used to get sick a lot. Like it, it was multiple times a year. I get a I get a pretty yeah. good cold, and it would, it would knock me down for a couple of days. Um, and, I, and I used to just think it was, oh, I have a weak immune system and I'm around you know, a lot of people, touching a lot of weights. That's just me. I don't hardly ever get sick. And the one thing that I've noticed that was the biggest difference, and I, and I, and I feel like this is connected to this, was when I started doing a lot of hot, cold contrast. I felt like when I started training, yeah, training that's an interesting a, thought. A whole the hot cold contrast, it changed the game for me with getting colds. It was it was immediately that year mm-hmm. that going forward after that where I was like, I don't ever get sick anymore. I feel like I never get sick, yeah, and then the even when I time, did get sick, it wasn't as nowhere right. near as bad. The only time like I would even really get sick was especially was when I was in Chicago in the extreme. You know, going from that thirty degree below, and then getting into like a spring where it was like all of a sudden now it's like you know eighty, ninety degrees, and just that that sharp like contrast right. would just like hammer me, and then mm-hmm. I would I would you know feel the effects coming on. It's got immune boosting effects for sure. Uh, there's a lot of little things you do, or a lot of things you can do that'll boost your immune system or strengthen or balance your immune system, but nothing, nothing is more important than having a healthy gut for the immune system. That's mm-hmm, a fact. Mm-hmm. 100%. If you're Well, okay, so that's so since you say that, then that is then the argument then to what I've been doing cuz I've also changed my diet ever since we went keto. I know I don't even come close to consuming the amount of processed foods, carbohydrates and things that I used to in the past. So, I mean, it, you could attribute it to being having a better gut in addition right. to also training that. Well, that because it was a drastic difference for me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not yeah. kidding. Like, I get sick a, quite a few times in a year. And Katrina and I were just talking about this the other day. She's like, "Man, I was sick around you. Sal was sick around you, and you didn't get sick." Like, I'm like, "I know. I don't ever get sick now. It's crazy. I used to remember when we first started the podcast, yeah. and you'd come in, and I'd be so mad at you. I'm like, "Fuck, I mean, I'm yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Like, there's yeah. no way I'm not getting it. I have that weak of an immune system that I, if I was close to somebody who was sick, it was inevitable. I'm getting it, and I would get it worse than you. Yeah. Where I've been around you guys, and you guys have all been sick in the last. Yeah, we make out all the time, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've, yeah. I haven't been sick. So it could be. Yet. So if you say the gut, I mean, maybe maybe it's a combination of that, right? Of me, my gut, and in addition to that, training the hot cold contrast. That's been the biggest game changer. Well, that me. said too, like, so as far as like consuming fermented, you know, foods and like you know introducing like a better bacteria in there, like, what do you suggest with that? Like as far as like kombuchas and you know adding in maybe like. You know, that is, is some form of- You know, of fermented a- foods uh, have been staple um, foods for humans for a long time. 
um, and they have health benefits. But it's it beyond that. Really, it's just reduce. It's just preventing the constant inflammation that we cause in our gut, the damage. Yeah. Like if you just do that, I think you've probably you're ninety something percent there. You know what I mean? Just just reduce your exposure to foods that cause problems for you with your gut, and a lot of it is these highly processed type of foods that we eat or foods that we eat that give us indigestion or, or these little minor issues that we tend to ignore, right. like avoid those for a while and see what happens. You don't want to add more gasoline to the problem. Yeah. yeah. Next question is from Aloha Jewels. My husband recently bought MAPS Performance. He would like to implement it along with CrossFit. In your interview with Jason Kalipa, he said he could see benefits of CrossFitters using MAPS Performance. Any suggestions on how to do both would be great. That's an interesting question. So MAPS Performance is the program that we have that's based around what we call um, full-spectrum athletic performance. So just the, the ability to, to be able to do multiple forms of activity, strength, speed, agility, uh, and different planes of mo- you know movement, good mobility. Like general athletic pursuits that are just going to benefit you yes. in, in any direction. Yes. Yeah. Now – Nothing's going to get you better at doing CrossFit than doing CrossFit. Yeah, that, yeah, this is really tough because I don't. I actually don't think because it's so specific. Right, R- Maps Performance was actually our our um, our answer to CrossFit. Like for people who love to do that that type of a workout, like you'll get a similar feel. Right. Yeah. It was it was designed to, to it was better programming in our opinion that was more organized than just the wad of the day. So it was really more the answer to CrossFit. It, honestly, I feel like if someone was to use some, use something in conjunction with CrossFit, like you're like, I want to be good at CrossFit, I'm going to do CrossFit. I would I would recommend Prime and Prime Pro. Yes, yeah. with with it that complements CrossFit better. If than- you're in CrossFit, right? So like, it, if I look at it like this, like if this is like your off season training, if you actually took an off season for a sport like CrossFit, if you treat CrossFit as a sport, right? So if Very, I went if I went through that and I went to my foundational pursuits of like I want to build up my max strength I want to build up you know my strength in multiple directions I want to build up my endurance and and build up my tank and my capacity like that's maps performance I'm 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 reinforcing all those you, you know pursuits and then that goes into season which now CrossFit I'm working on the skill specifically so you would have to kind of if you're you'd have to still incorporate CrossFit. But like a very light version of that, you know, just to maintain the skill of like going through those movements. Yeah, what, if, what would you do? Would you like? Because I'm thinking too. You got to think of our mobility days on there. Like I yeah. would, I either one, I would follow I'd my do it then you cr- know? my CrossFit days, and then every other day do our my, my mobility days, or I would do like a like you said, I would follow Maps Performance to a T leading mm-hmm. up to my CrossFit right. programming. But I'm assuming that this person probably belongs to a CrossFit gym. They're paying a hundred something bucks a month or whatever it is. Yeah, and it's, they're working out there ideal. with a class how do you incorporate maps performance in that setting i would say that's, a, that's a little- i would so the maps performance has three foundational or for you know what we call foundational but the hard workouts a week and then in between our mobility sessions i would say do if you want to do both do one wad a week and do two pick two foundational workouts a week from that's, a good, there you go. that's, that's a, a good strategy good. so that's, now you've got your yeah, three like intense that. workouts and then do all the mobility sessions in between right for sure and then you'd be pretty much i like uh, that i think you'd be pretty I, much that i like yeah. that if you're really into com- crossfit and you're going to compete in crossfit you're going to probably want to follow yeah. specific crossfit programming yeah. if that's your goal now if your goal is because you like to take crossfit classes you like to be in the box you like to you know that's the that's your kind of workout that you enjoy you want to be fit than what I just said, you know, two mass performance foundational workouts, one wad, and you're setting. It's got a similar feel. Yeah, you know, it's got. To, if you enjoy that type of a workout, it's going to be similar with mass performance. It's just we programmed it in a way where we we eliminated some of the movements uh, in the programming of CrossFit that can cause problems, and we replaced them with others. Well, we put them in in different orders, and yeah, and I like your guys' idea of like really having them focus on Prime Prime Pro, be- right? Because. Um, I also look at it, if you look at it like an Iron Man, like somebody's pursuing like an Iron Man where they're they're having to do multiple things to their body where it's like, man, their joints are really getting exposed because their their output is so high. And uh, so, you know, your output's very high going through these like rigorous workouts. So, you know, that's the that's the real focus is like, how do I preserve my body? To me, that's what I. Anybody who's a CrossFitter that's like, oh, I love CrossFit, but what would you guys recommend to me? I'm, it's always Prime Prime Pro. Prime Prime Pro to me, because it, because it, it can complement what you're already currently doing. You don't need to really change 
what you're doing. Like if you're like Sal said, you love the classes, you love following the wad of the day and stuff like that. You're not really hung up on, is this the best programming for me to get the most results? You're just about the whole process of enjoying the process. Then that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You could totally still do that. And by introducing prime and prime pro into your routine, pre post workout and on your off days, that right there is going to complement your cross, your CrossFit, you know, whatever they, I don't even like calling it programming because it's not programming, it's wads, right? Mm-hmm. Your CrossFit wads. I think that's a, that's a great way to do it. Jacob T. Mertens, what fitness categories do you see breaking through in the future? Oh, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm trying to wrap my brain around that one. What do I see? What do we see that's kind of blowing up right now? Fitness categories? Um, yeah, how would you? I wish you gave an example of what he meant by a category because there's a lot of things I can think of right now, like yeah. modalities, like different yeah. a different modality. Like, do we see like another CrossFit arising or like another Orange Theory or something like that coming up? Like, is are we going that direction? Yeah, like are we talking like VR? Are we talking like um, you know like brain training? Like, uh, so I do. That's th- not where my mind. Goes. Okay, so that's a good uh, that's a good direction. I think there's there and we're seeing it happen right now. This. You know, we just interviewed Dave Asprey recently, and there is this huge push around the whole training the brain. Mm-hmm. Like training the brain is becoming so important and so cool and so trendy right now that that's turning into a whole category. That I think that some people will be like, oh, you train, you train this, you train. Oh, I, well, I'm into training my brain. You know, I train yeah. my brain. I don't know about yeah. it. you. Might be lifting the weights. I don't care. I care about my, <laughs> my your brain, which is my operating system that runs everything. So you could have cool muscles, but if you're not training your brain, you know, like yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like with all the new tropics and everything coming out and stuff like that, and all the different, you know, pl- totally. putting st- putting stuff on your head, Halo and all that shit like that. So I think that's a that's a good. That's a good one. I think I think it's easy. So tribalism is a very something very predictable with people. So if you create some kind of a tribe feel to something, then it's going to get popular. So and, and intensity is something that's very uh, attractive in fitness. Anytime you yeah. get a group of t- people together and you beat them up really hard with you some kind a of shared branding, experience, you yeah, know, like a war story. Yeah, then you're gonna you're gonna you you're gonna tap into something that has got some type of viral quality. Um, you know, CrossFit did it. You know, Orange Theory's doing it. I see that being. I see. I don't see. I see that continue to grow. I see more small group type training with different themes or different you know fads involved oh, you, that are just. Oh, gonna I grow. see. Okay, so I see it more like Peloton. You guys are familiar with that, which is yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's you're on a bike. And you have a screen and all of a sudden everybody like logs in and it's like a streaming where you see everybody else like in their house, like riding a bike and oh, you're, cool. you have a shared experience, but it's virtual. So I, I feel like, and that's why I brought up VR too, because it might get to that point where you put goggles on and like everybody's hanging out, you know, kind of like Facebook. It's like, Hey, these are my friends, but they're not real, you know, <laughs> but uh, you know, like they're, they're, they're doing real, that. not here. You know, what's weird. Cause I was in, um, I was in the gym yesterday and I, I was listening listening this this girl was doing a workout just by herself but like you could hear like the the voice of somebody that was like coaching her through all these movements and it was like very like like every little step she was just like doing everything to exactly what this instructor was telling her to do and i was like oh it's interesting i wonder if that's a thing you know like people are downloading this audio to where it's like telling them okay now we're starting and then they actually grab the weights and you know do all this stuff like from the virtual trainer. you know what hasn't made a res- you know what's going to probably make a resurgence because fitness is so cyclical i was going to say we should look at history more than anything yeah. else because yeah. history always repeats itself yeah, totally. in yeah. one form or another right yeah so so weights and kettlebells and iron has been kind of popular for a little while i bet you there's going to be a body weight movement that's going to explode i bet you there's going to be like oh, some kind of like that's a, going on right now it is yeah, yeah but i could see like there. i could see that being the big thing where it becomes this big tribe oh, and it's, arguing it's like, already which one's better weights or body weight well you know? when you look at people yeah. like juji and um uh, who's another guy that i talk to all the time i think is michael velasquez or michael chavez i forget his name but he's got like i don't know quarter million followers or whatever and he does all kinds of cool like break dancing body weight exercise stuff like that's pretty popular i mean we have that kid who came down here for with us that shit goes too far yeah it is it's like anything else you know what i'm saying i I think it's i I think it's good though i like i like it better than a lot of different things like i'd rather see people get so great at body weight movements they can do all these crazy spins and weird shit than just reminded me because like i was at this playground with my kids and we just walked to this playground that was like right down the street from us 
and this guy was there with like a couple other guys and they're all wearing like kind of Jenga pants and like fucking, they, I mean, they looked like they're about to hacky sack or like, Is that you know, shit break back dance. In style? No, they were, they were flipping and then like landing on the rail and like jumping and doing all this fucking shit. Like they called it like free running. So it's a lot like parkour, but now they're just doing like tricks off of like playground stuff. And I was like. I was like, is this a thing? They had like shirts and everything. Like it was like a crew. No way. Yeah, dude. And then they went down and they were doing all these like, you know, like flippy stuff and basically well, you, stuff that I do that is a joke. You know, they were doing for real. Well, you know, okay, so we saw you remember the the barbell guys from New York. I mean the pull up guys from New York that made its way over to the West Coast and that became really popular as all the guys I forget what they're called. Bar guys or whatever. Yeah, the bar guys or whatever like that. All the dudes that were all oh, jacked. Right. Bar and, stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. that stuff. So that became really popular. We met those guys, uh Zood Fitness, I think is what they are. The the jump rope guys. Oh, Remember okay. that? That their their uh-huh. whole like their whole following is around like jump rope exercise and stuff. So yeah, it's always like one thing, you know. Like yeah, yeah, you know those those type of things. I feel I feel like I mean they're always going to be on like Sal was saying. There's always going to be uh, they're all going to continue to grow. You're, but niche. They're like, do I see yeah. something blowing up to like CrossFit level right now? Like I don't know. Yeah, I don't know mm-hmm. what 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 that is other than Orange Theory. Right? I like to think that we're we're pushing we're we're changing the way that people look at health and fitness. I think because uh, we're so anti camp. You know, I, th- I I think that message is becoming more popular that, hey, everything's cool. Try this out. Do the this anti-camp will be branded. Right, right. it will. <laughs> It'll be a camp. Of course, Damn it. of course, of course. You know, yeah. th- for sure it will be that way. Because right now I, I feel like there's this, uh, you know, back and forth of who's, whose modality is better or which way is this. Mm-hmm. And it, still that going on. And I feel like we're trying to push the message different, which is, listen, there's something to take away from all of those things. All those modalities, they all got positives, but they also have negatives too. It's yeah. okay. It's okay to admit that, you know, and, and find out what works well with you and your lifestyle or where you're currently at or what your current goal, goals are. Like, I think that message is is getting more popular. Next up is Lawrence Nyes. There are a lot of pro bodybuilders advising to do low volume, high intensity training. Although they do take steroids, it looks like it works really well. What are your opinions on low volume versus high volume and moderate intensity versus high intensity? All different all different tools. Right. Yeah. All different tools, all different signals. You can utilize all of them to get your body to change and respond. This goes right it, into the question we were just saying about how yeah, camp, there's camps. Yeah, like you this can't is, just live in one versus the other. There is the, the, I think it's so Especially funny. Especially if you're natural. I used to think it was so yeah. funny when I'd hear the bodybuilders like, oh, I don't do that because I'm, I'm not a power lifter. Or, I don't do that because yeah. I'm, not, I'm not this. I'm like- it's Make my waist blocky. Like That's a stupid thing to say. Like That's just because you're like, if you're in a building your body, you should be doing different adaptations. Like That's what you should definitely do because then your body will respond to it. Yeah. If you're doing the same adaptation- forever like then so the what the, same. the bodybuilder thing that everybody does which i'm so used to this is the is it's the superset everything burnout sets like it's lots of repetitions get the pump you're maximizing pump there's lots of benefits to that it's mm-hmm. amazing for mm-hmm. you and yeah. let me tell you somebody who's always lifting strength who's hand stays in the three to five rep range and always lifts heavy and high volume those people would benefit a ton from training that way but a lot of these bodybuilders that have been training that way week in, week out, month in, month month out, and some of them year in, year out that way, dude, one of the best things they could do is completely go the opposite direction and train different than that. Train heavy ass weight, three reps, you know? That's right. Yeah. But it, all of these, so, so you can go extreme in either direction and it, it'll stop working for you, but volume is connected to muscle growth. So they've done studies where they'll have people in, you know, they'll compare groups and this group over here does five sets versus this group that does three sets. The five set group builds more muscle. So volume is there. Intensity is important too, because if you go too low of intensity, you're not sending really a strong signal. Although low intensity still sends a signal. And if you send it enough times for long enough, it'll still even build muscle. This is why you see people who, you know, like I've talked about before, blue collar workers who working with their hands all the time. No, they're not working with their hands to failure. They've been doing it for 20 years, but now they've got these muscular hands and forearms as a result. It's all valuable. It's all important stuff. Yeah, I, the problem comes from, you know, finding something that works and then thinking that that's always going to work. God, dude, it, it, it's yeah. the most common thing you see. And I swear to God, everybody does this. Everybody is guilty of this. If you're fucking listening to this, check yourself right now. Because I know I did. I know everybody in this fucking room did. Everybody I've ever met does this. At one point in your fitness journey, 
you switched to something you read or someone gave you information like what we're talking about right now and you did it and you saw the most change you've ever seen in your body and then you identify with it. Yeah. And you'd stay with it for weeks, months, sometimes years because it works so well with you. That is so silly. And you're not looking at the complete picture. There's so many other factors on why. Well, they just don't know any better. Like, yeah. I'll get, we'll get clients who are like, oh, you know, I really best like shape, this. The best shape of my life was when I played soccer in college. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do now what do they call is that? I'm going to go play soccer. Yeah. Literally. Right. What, do, what do they call it? Not imprint, but like, you, you know, in like a. Um, uh, like a little baby chick or something like, like looks at you as the mother like what's that called I don't know come on man <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Google come on yes you are you Google I'm not Siri <laughs> yeah yeah it's something it like imprints itself on you and like so like forever you're sort of like you know identified with that you know here's the one rule you can you can count on 100% when it comes to training and diet uh, your body changes all the time that's the one rule so whatever you find that works for your body now, you can count, you can bet that it will not be the thing that always works for you forever. Right. At some point, it's going to be what your body doesn't need and your body wants something else. I've done all of this. I've trained where I've done one set to failure per body part, and that worked for a very short period of time, and then I switched to something else. Um, what I find that works best for most people is a little bit more frequency not going to failure most of the time, but training intensely, and then phasing different rep ranges and different exercises in and out of the workouts. That being said, if you're really experienced with your training, have fun trying different things. Have fun going, you know, today's leg day, instead of doing my normal 12 sets for legs, I'm going to warm up and then I'm going to do one set to absolute failure for legs, and that's all I'm going to do today. Yeah, or, right. you know, normally I do 10 sets for legs. I'm going to reduce the intensity and do 20 sets for legs right. or whatever. Like mess with these kinds of things and watch what happens to your body. Like, uh, you know, and when it comes to pro bodybuilders, here's the, here's the thing. They're the worst people to look for advice. It's the bottom line. They're just, <laughs> they are. Hey, fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. Not all of them, bro. Hey, look. Come on, not all of them. Usually the case. That was an overgeneralization, hey, you asshole. Let me tell you something. <laughs> for, the, for the most part, for the most part, the only people worse than pro bodybuilders for giving you training advice are people that have never exercised before. Pro bodybuilders know exercises, they know body parts, they know kind of stuff. <clears throat> but when you go ask a, and I'm talking about pro bodybuilders, when you go ask a genetically yeah. genetic anomaly who also has been on you know gear and training, artificial testosterone, they don't know what the fuck to tell you. Well, You're a regular guy. They're, like, they're, what are you going to tell me? In their in their defense, I have to defend them because there are. I'm I'm not that way, you know. Even though I was on juice, I was doing. I still understood. You nutrition. identify as a pro bodybuilder? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't identify. That's why I don't identify. But I was one, so I can't be alone in this camp. That that, that I'm not the only smart pop pro bodybuilder out there. Although I will agree with you yeah. that that's well as far as giving advice. That and shouldn't like be your showing, criteria. Yeah. That shouldn't be your criteria why you take advice from somebody. Because who would you who would you trust to train your sister, a pro bodybuilder? Or a personal trainer with one year experience. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, almost every time. Yeah. Now, there's shitty trainers too. I'm not right, saying. Right, right. That's okay. what it's like. Come on. There's... But pro bodybuilders don't know very much about how to train the big, people. The biggest and most common no. problem. They know how to train themselves. The biggest and the most common problem I see with uh, pro bodybuilders, and if we're over, being, we're totally overgeneralizing right now, is the, most of them have done a really good job of figuring themselves out. Right, they did a really good job of figuring themselves out, and so they make the mistake that because it worked so well for them, that it should work for you, and you just lack the discipline Duh. to do what they did. That's always stressed, right? And so it's like you just don't know how to sacrifice enough. You just don't know how to push yourself enough. You just don't go hard enough. You just don't go. You don't know. You don't eat. You're not disciplined when you eat, and so. Because that's what worked for them. And we've seen this. We have friends like this that I we've watched go to start businesses in, in the in the industry and they've been very successful getting themselves in shape and they're badass at that. But they're they only have maybe a handful of people under their belt that they've actually trained and it takes Hundreds of people Bro, that this you've, is why you've gone through that you realize like, oh shit, like the, all this bullshit that I've been applying to myself, maybe I'm unique. Bro, this is why a guy, <laughs> this is why a guy like Ben Picolsi stands out so much. He stands out like crazy because he knows stuff about exercise. He knows about training. He knows that kind of stuff. But 
If you take a, a, pro, a pro bodybuilder who's never really trained anybody, but has been in the gym for a long time, mm-hmm. has been working out for a long time, their <clears throat> the lens that they see training nutrition through is through their body. Mm-hmm. And you have, I hate to break this to you, listener, you have zero in common with <laughs> pro bodybuilders. You just do. Yeah, I, I, I guarantee you 99.9% of you listening right now have nothing in common with the pro body. Your body, your body doesn't respond like a pro bodybuilder does. If you were, if I was able to take the average person and place them in the body of a pro bodybuilder, and they would, they would be, they would be blown away well, by how know, their body responds. Do you Have know you ever, a big yeah. reason why we've had a lot of success is because we wrote programs for the masses. Yeah, we didn't write programs for pro bodybuilders. Right. The average person. And the the and the truth is, when you open up magazines, when you download a lot of the programs. It's it's appealing to all the pros and all the people. What do they do? What do, this is what Listen, they this uh, is how they train. It's the god thing. It's like you know you put this person on a pedestal and you feel like well if they got there like I, I'm just gonna try and like follow in their footsteps like even if I could get a fraction of what they got. You know? Dude, it's it's like I don't know. Okay, look, I, I we, we've been in gyms for a long time. I can think of maybe three people in my entire life where I would say that their genetics are maybe not pro bodybuilder because pro bodybuilder genes, I've I've only met pro bodybuilders, but I've never met someone and said, that guy's got a pro, because there's so many factors. But I've known people who you know build somebody, muscle. You know someone like that, like a Jason Sinatra. There you go. If you were to throw that guy on yeah. anabolic steroids. Oh my God, you'd right. be Mr. Olympia. Right. But when I I've, I definitely have known a few people in my life, in, be just, and this is through the thousands of people that have walked through the gyms that I've worked in, where you just there's just another it's just another type of human being it's just it's just rare there was one guy that worked for me he was a porter and this fucking dude it had the worst diet i've ever seen in my entire life horrible it was terrible he would come into work in the morning and he would eat for breakfast a single pop tart his lunch <laughs> was a bologna and cheese sandwich and at night he'd have chef boyardee oh. he maybe consumed 40 grams of protein a day maybe Maybe consume. He didn't have money to buy protein supplements. He didn't make. He, he, you know, we didn't pay him much, right, to clean the gym. And this guy would do skull crushers with two hundred and twenty-five pounds, a, a barbell with two hundred and twenty-five pounds. Skull crushers. He would not work out for a little while, take some time off, look more muscular than every trainer I had on staff. Then he'd work out for a week, and I swore to God he'd gain twelve pounds of muscle every single time. And I, I'd talk to him about it, and I remember I'd grill him. Super responsive, dude. I'd bring him in my office. I'd sit him down. I'd be like, dude, just be honest with me. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, you some, yeah. He's you like, nothing, I swear to God, man. And I, I I knew, once I got to know him, he was telling the truth. And I've known a couple people like this. These people have nothing in common with the average people. <laughs> right. And if you were inside their body for a second, you'd go to the gym, work out, and the next time you go work out, you'd be like, oh, fuck, I grew already. Yeah. Like that's, So to get advice from these people on training, uh, it, it just, they just don't, no, they just great. don't relate. It's just like, I mean, anything else, the, the, a lot of times the greatest players don't make good coaches, you know, it's just yeah. that simple. Yeah. You, they might like, been, just hit the ball. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Genetic <laughs> lottery. Yeah. That's yeah. how it worked for me. I just did a lot of it. <laughs> so I do it a lot. It's like a beauty pageant and it's like, I want to be hot like her, you know, it's like, no, you're, you're not. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? There's nothing you can do. Sorry. But, I mean, in the defense of the bodybuilders and the, the low volume, high intensity, absolutely it has merit. Mm-hmm. If you don't ever train that way, I bet you if you started training that way for the next four to six weeks, you'd see great benefits from that. But don't get stuck there. I mean, everybody I know that I've have ever- Have fun, man. Have fun with your training. Right. And it, I think I think as you, know, you should always be kind of checking yourself that whatever it is that you're following, I don't care what program, what CrossFit, what Orange Theory, what thing you're doing, even if it's fucking MAPS, right? If, if you were following MAPS Red, the it's phase one over and over and over and over. It'll, and it'll over. stop. It'll right, stop working. Right, like, yeah. It's, we wrote that. It's fucking awesome. But you got to get through it. You got to go through it. You got to move to the next phase. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole reason. That's why we phase all the programs. Excellent. Listen, go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. That is the place to subscribe. We post new videos on fitness, nutrition. We do debates, controversy, comedy, all of it. Mind Pump TV on YouTube. Check it out. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, 
The RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>